Welcome to Reach Out for Life. It is our goal to present a thoughtful and practical Christianity for today, which you can discover with your mind and live to the full with your life. And now the host of Reach Out for Life, Dr. Larry Bryce. We want to give you a very warm welcome to our program, Reach Out for Life, today. You're going to meet a very interesting guest who's a young minister of St. Giles Presbyterian Church at the Kingsway in Toronto, one of the most prosperous areas in Toronto. We're going to ask him what it's like to minister to the rich and famous, as well as to minister to many of the poorer people in his area. Welcome to our program today, Bryn. Thank you, Larry. It's a pleasure to be here. Bryn, what needs do the rich in your community have of Jesus Christ? Well, Larry, I, I don't know that the needs of the rich are any different from that of the poor in terms of needing Jesus Christ as a Savior. One of my favorite quotes is from a relatively unknown Puritan who says that we should be convinced of the utter insufficiency of everything below Jesus Christ to bring relief to our troubled souls. And I believe that whether I'm ministering in a rich area or in a not so uh, affluent area, it's necessary for me to get that message across that apart from Christ, nothing else will minister sufficient relief to their souls. Bryn, what do you say to somebody who says to you, I have no need of a crutch? How do you answer that? It's difficult to convince someone of their need of Christ. In fact, that is the great challenge. Once you've uh, created in their heart a an understanding that they need Christ, then they're accepting. And, but in fact, that's not our job. Our job is to proclaim the gospel, trusting that God is creating this sense of needing Christ within them. I liked your comment uh, about the crutch. Often I hear it phrased to me, Bryn, don't you think Christianity is a crutch? And to that I say, yes, it, it is a crutch. Spiritually, my legs are broken, and Jesus Christ is that crutch. He is that person, that being, who can prop me up and help me to walk the way I'm meant to walk. Amen. Why are so many people dissatisfied with life? Not just the poor, but the rich too. A richer, and richer and poorer people are both alike dissatisfied with much of life. Why is that, Brian? My guess would be, and, and again, I, I think Augustine said it best, that we're built by God. We're created by God with a void in our heart that can only be filled by God. And so whether we're rich or poor, whether we're from the east or from the west, we, because we're human, we are designed with this void in us that only God can fill. So the challenge it, that I have before me is to communicate the gospel in such a way that people understand their need, that the void is there. Does faith in Jesus Christ make us less ambitious, less aggressive, and less of an achiever in life? Well, I don't know about less ambitious. I, in fact, I would, if I look at my own life, I think I'm more ambitious as a result of being a follower of Jesus because he did everything perfectly, and I stumble through just about everything I attempt. And so, that creates in me ambition to model or to emulate my Lord. And that's a difficult thing. And it's something that can only be done by the power of His Spirit working within me. But Christ doesn't block their way to success then, Bryn? No, I don't think so. If, if there was ever a strong human being, it was God incarnate in Jesus. He stood up to the religious authorities of the day, when the, the wealthy, rich, young ruler came and approached him, uh, Jesus' response was, uh, you know, was no less uh, challenging to him as it was to the blind man or, or to the lepers that Jesus encountered. He was strong, uh, unequivocal with all of those he shared the gospel message with. And when we have Christ, we have his strength, his desire to do the things that he gave us vision to do, Brent. 
Right. We, as Christians, we have the mind of Christ and we have the spirit of Christ. And, and while we struggle in our sinful nature, we do have the means to, to have the strength that Christ had during his earthly life. Now, Bryn, for a personal question. How did you come to personal faith in Jesus Christ? Well, that's, that's a long story, and I'll try to give you the, the highlights. I was like those individuals I described earlier in my answers. I didn't believe I needed Jesus Christ. Uh, I didn't think I needed a crutch. I thought I was just fine. But I was just uh, a young boy at the time that I was thinking this, uh, 11 years of age. Uh, mom and dad tried to drag me to church. I wasn't interested. No need of God, no need of the church, Brent. No, the, the church seemed highly irrelevant to me, um, boring at best, and really had no desire to be a part of the community. What changed that? Well, what changed that is when I was 11 years old, uh, my father passed away. And for an 11 year old, that is, that is traumatic to say the least. And, and the question that kept on going through my mind was, where is my dad? Will I ever see him again? And the answer didn't come right away. Uh, that was the one question I couldn't answer was, where is my dad? And it just so happened that uh, during the summer months that followed, I went to a Christian camp, something that did interest me because it had a lot of sports and, and a lot of great interaction with kids my age. Where was the camp, Brent? Muskoka Woods Sports Resort in Rosso, Ontario. Okay. And at the time, uh, we had Bible studies uh, every evening. And in fact, I was quite disruptive during most of these Bible studies, but God was working in my heart. And... One of the last nights of our Bible study, our counselor issued a challenge to the children to put their faith in Christ. You were 11. I was 11 years old. And, and I'm, I didn't meet that challenge right away. I thought about it uh, for, for quite some time. Uh, at least, uh, well, let, it, let me put it to you this way. The next evening, uh, before I went to sleep, thinking about all that the counselor had said, I said, Lord, uh, I need you. I didn't mm -hmm. think I needed you, mm -hmm. uh, but I know that I do, and Amen. I know that Jesus is who the Bible says he is, and I want to follow him. Amen. Just a prayer of commitment. And being a pre-teenager, I, I can tell you that it is a very difficult thing to follow Christ as a teenager. And, and I found myself often having to recommit myself because it, the walk with Jesus is not an easy one. And it, it takes time. Brian, who influenced you the most? Do you have a mentor, a father or mother, uh, a, 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 a figure in your life who helped you to grow in your faith in Christ? Well, during my teenage years, two counselors from Muskoka Woods in particular took it upon themselves to follow up with me, uh, to write me, to have me Wonderful. come and visit. And, and I credit them as being God's chosen ones to, to nurture me through those very difficult teenage years. Mm. Bryn, what book has influenced you the most in your Christian faith? Yes, and I don't know if this will sound strange, but the book that's influenced me the most outside of the Bible is John Calvin's The Institutes of the wow. Christian Religion. You're a real academic, Bryn. Well, I don't know about that. It, many people think of Calvin as this angry theologian, this old man who's just preaching fire and brimstone. But he wrote The Institutes in his early 20s. Brilliant work. And I read his work in my early 20s. You're to be commended, Bryn. That's so. heavy going. Well... What I saw in Calvin was not simply sound theology, but a real zeal and love for Jesus Christ. We don't, we don't write theology today the way Calvin did back then. He wasn't afraid to let his affection for Christ permeate every page of his book. And that was infectious, was it, Bryn? His love for God, his zeal for God. Yes, yes. If I could be half the theologian Calvin was, I'd, I'd be well on my way. Bryn, you're personable, you're intelligent. You could have had a great career in education or business. Why is it you chose a career in the ministry, the Christian ministry? Well, that's a good question. Uh, 
as a reformed person or a person of the reformed persuasion, we talk about irresistible grace in terms of coming to know Christ. I do believe there's such a thing as an irresistible call to be a minister of the gospel. And I confess there have been times where I've imagined myself in another occupation. But as I imagined it, there was something inside of me that told me it would never bring the fulfillment. It would never bring uh, the, the realization that I'm doing exactly what God wants me to be. And people ask me to, to frame that in terms of what I do as a minister. And, and I like to rephrase the chariots of fire theme and say that when I'm in the pulpit preaching, I feel God's pleasure. And that tells me that I'm where God wants me to be. Was there some specific, specific way God called you into the ministry, Bryn? Was it through a service or a person or a book? Was it Calvin? Or how, how did God really get a hold of you to call you into the ministry, that irresistible grace? Well, when I was at the University of Western Ontario, I was a part of a group called Campus Crusade for Christ. And the director took me under his wing and later told me that he was recruiting me to later be on staff with him. And he had me preach uh, as a 20-year-old to 150 university students. And uh, the night went quite well. And it was some time later that he said, Bryn, I don't think you're meant for university ministry. I think you're meant for the church. The pulpit ministry, Bryn. Yes. OK. Uh, he, he saw in me, I guess, uh, a side that was, uh, my love was for the church. I okay. had a passion to see the church okay. restored and renewed. Uh huh. We know that in your area there are very rich people and there are poorer people, the, the people who feel they just don't have enough. Is it different to minister to the one group than the other? Yes and no. Uh, yes, in that the challenge is to keep both groups from being distracted. What's different are perhaps the distractions. And now I know I, I'm speaking generally, but as I'm at St. Giles Kingsway, I see the challenges. Uh, the folks uh, in the community, whether they're in, in this church or just out in the community, they have the means to engage in so many activities, and their children are in so many activities. And going to church falls lower and lower on the list of things to do. And so the challenge is to call the affluent back to prioritizing Jesus Christ and his church above everything else above all their things they can do and have. Mm -hmm. Now, the less affluent, uh, I think, would have distractions as well, but they would be of a different nature. But again, the call is the same, that whether you're rich or whether you're poor, uh, Jesus Christ must be first. We must seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and God will take care of the rest. Amen. What would you like to say to someone today uh, uh, who's in the Christian church, how can we reach Canadians today, Bryn, uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ? What would be your advice to the church? Well, the church, I think, has fallen down on their responsibility to reach out, if I can use that phrase. We've spent so much time looking after ourselves, almost a, a fortress mentality that the church needs to demonstrate clearly that they care about the community in which they minister, that they care about the individual families. And, and how that takes place will vary community to community. But the people need to see the church in action, caring for the poor in their midst, reaching out with personal invitation to come to church, uh, highlighting for them, outlining for them the things that the church offers them for their spiritual development. So the church really does have something to give to everybody, the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which can change their life no matter who they are. Absolutely. And so our challenge uh, as ministers of the gospel are to motivate uh, those in our congregations to, to share the gospel, to go out and, and communicate to their neighbors, their co-workers, their family members, uh, that this is an important thing. Bryn, can you speak to some person today and let them know how they can find personal faith in Jesus Christ above and beyond anything riches can give them? How can they find personal faith in Jesus Christ? Would you speak to that person 
uh, out there today. Please, Brent. Well, the Lord God who created the universe knows where each of us is at and what each of us need. We all need Jesus Christ, and we need to be convinced of the utter insufficiency of everything beneath Christ to minister relief to our troubled souls. The key to coming before God is humility. It's to say, I can't do it on my own. I can't get through life on my own strength, uh, based on my own intelligence or my own education. We need to come to that realization that we need Christ every step of the way. So it's coming before God in prayer, confessing that need, and trusting that He will change our disposition, change our heart, and give us His Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Christ, which will help us to follow Christ, and it's a spirit that will comfort us all of our days and bring us the relief, the happiness, the joy, and the peace that we all desperately want and need. Amen. Thank you, Bryn, for being here today. God bless you, and God may, may God give you the words of life for your people. Thank you very much, Larry. Write to us today for your own copy of Dr. Larry Bryce's new book, Confident Faith in a World that Wants to Believe. This book demonstrates that you can find a confident faith in God from the study of the natural world that God has created, as well as reliable evidence for God revealed in the Bible and in Jesus Christ. This book will strengthen faith for every reader, and Dr. Bryce goes beyond just the academic proof by showing how he has proven this faith in his own personal experience. Everyone who has faced adversity will find Larry's testimony in this book a great encouragement. Readers are now raving how good a book this is for building faith and giving hope in God. Write today for your copy to Reach Out for Life, Port Rowan, Ontario, N0E1M0. We always appreciate every letter that we receive and want you to know how important your financial gifts are to keeping us on the air. Again, write to us today at Reach Out for Life, Port Rowan, Ontario, N0E1M0. Thank you and God bless you. You just heard from the Reverend Bryn McPhail of St. Giles Presbyterian Church in one of the most affluent parts of Toronto. Bryn talked today about that God-shaped blank inside all of us that only God can fill, and how in his ministry he's found that not just the rich, but those who lack what the rich have, the poor people of Canada, are distracted in different ways from finding that God who alone can fill that blank in our hearts and lives. Bryn talked about the distraction that people have when they have much money and they feel they have no need of God in their life. They're distracted by that from finding the real source of life and peace and joy and eternal life. And how the poor of our society as well are seeking for enough to live on and can be distracted by the pressures of finances that they're seeking to forget about seeking after God and the blessings that can come from Him. It's like the short story that Jesus told in the Bible. It was just a fictional story that He told, a parable. Jesus told sometimes amusing stories, humorous ones, and sometimes serious ones to make a spiritual point. In this story that Jesus told, it was called the rich fool. There was a fool, there was a rich man, Jesus said, who had terrific crops one year, a terrific abundance of his harvest, and he could see that his old barns wouldn't hold the wealth that would come from his harvest this year. So he said, what will I do, having such abundance coming to me? I know what I will do. I will tear down my old barns, and I will build new ones, and so that when the harvest comes, I will be able to fill my new barns with plenty. That's exactly what happened. And the crops produced as he thought they would, and he had terrific results, and the barns were filled to capacity. 
And then Jesus told in this story that this is what the man said. I have plenty laid up for many years. I will eat, drink, and be merry because I have so much ahead of me. You know what God said to this man that very night? Thou fool, tonight thy soul is required of thee. That night this man died and left everything behind that he had accumulated. He was so distracted by his riches and his plenty. He thought he had financial security which many people are seeking in Canada. But there's no such thing as financial security. We can have lots of money, but who says we're going to have the years of life to enjoy it? We don't have financial security. And when we have plenty of money or lack of money, we're distracted from finding God himself. And Jesus said in this parable, this man was rich, but not in the things of God. How can we be rich in the things of God? Well, there's the riches of the kingdom of heaven. That when we're generous with our riches to other people and help others, support other charities, support our churches, support those in need around the world, that we build up for ourselves riches in heaven. And when we are poor, we can have riches in heaven by knowing Jesus Christ in our life. This is what the Bible calls the indescribable gift of Jesus Christ. Come with me to the cross to see the true riches of the Christian. How can this be? The cross, you say, Reverend Bryce? The cross where Jesus suffered and was pierced by nails, crucified, his blood was shed? How can that have anything to do with riches or filling the God-shaped blank in my heart? Paul could say, I came to you knowing nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why would he say that? He was a Pharisee of the Jewish religion, learned in much of the law and a familiar with Greek and Roman philosophy. Why would he say, I came to you knowing nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified? You see, at the cross, it cost the Son of God everything that he might give you all his gifts, which he never charges us anything for. In fact, we could never earn it. We would never earn enough to pay our way to get into heaven. This was done at the cross. At the cross, there's a marvelous exchange where Jesus takes our sins and dies in our place so that we might receive and exchange his righteousness by faith. What an exchange. His riches. He takes our poverty and gives us his riches. That's where we find true, true wealth at the cross of Jesus Christ. Don't be distracted by your money or your lack of money. Come to Jesus Christ. Let him fill your life with the gifts he would give you at the cross. His grace, his mercy, forgiveness, and the gift of eternal life, if you are willing to receive it. Won't you receive it now? Everything God would give you, that you may have true riches, please make this your own prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I humbly come by faith, to the cross. I receive your gift of mercy, of love, of forgiveness, of eternal life. I receive your riches. Take away my poverty and bless me today, for I ask it in the strong and matchless name of Jesus Christ my Lord. Amen. God bless you. Write to us today for your own copy of Dr. Larry Bryce's new book, Confident Faith in a World that Wants to Believe. 
this book demonstrates that you can find a confident faith in God from the study of the natural world that God has created, as well as reliable evidence for God revealed in the Bible and in Jesus Christ. This book will strengthen faith for every reader, and Dr. Bryce goes beyond just the academic proof by showing how he has proven this faith in his own personal experience. Everyone who has faced adversity will find Larry's testimony in this book a great encouragement. Readers are now raving how good a book this is for building faith and giving hope in God. Write today for your copy to Reach Out for Life, Port Rowan, Ontario, N0E1M0. I want to read to you today two letters that we received from the Toronto area. First of all, from this, uh, this uh, person living in Toronto who writes this. I find your program very challenging and spiritually challenging in a quite consistent manner. I watch when I am able to, after I come home from my own church service on Sunday. It is gratifying to find a no gimmicks, honest, forthright presentation of the gospel. Thank you for that letter. Thank you for your recognition of our uh, ministry on the air and we're so grateful for those who write. Here's another one from North York, from a man living there, uh, and he writes this in his letter. It seems to us, it seems to me, that Reach Out for Life is both practical and pertinent, designed to meet the differing needs of our Christian community. While it is meant to be a thoughtful and practical presentation of Jesus Christ with leading Christian fig leaders in Canada, and overseas, and we're so grateful for your letters. Please write to us if God has blessed you, if you uh, have been uh, touched by the interviews on our program, please write to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for your letters. Write to us today for your own copy of Dr. Larry Bryce's new book, Confident Faith in a World that Wants to Believe. This book demonstrates that you can find a confident faith in God from the study of the natural world that God has created, as well as reliable evidence for God revealed in the Bible and in Jesus Christ. This book will strengthen faith for every reader, and Dr. Bryce goes beyond just the academic proof by showing how he has proven this faith in his own personal experience. Everyone who has faced adversity will find Larry's testimony in this book a great encouragement. Readers are now raving how good a book this is for building faith and giving hope in God. Write today for your copy to Reach Out for Life, Port Rowan, Ontario, N0E1M0. We always appreciate every letter that we receive and want you to know how important your financial gifts are to keeping us on the air. Again, write to us today at Reach Out for Life, Port Rowan, Ontario, N0E1M0. Thank you and God bless you. <laughs>